Hello and welcome. You're watching NewsX. I'm Minakshi Upreti. The top focus of this bulletin. The Indian American Muslim Council, based out of the United States of America, has organized a congressional briefing slated to be held on the 26th of January, our Republic Day. Now, the event is titled Protecting India's, I repeat, Protecting India's Pluralist Constitution. This event is co-hosted by none other than, believe it or not, Amnesty International of the USA and Genocide Watch.com. Co. Now, uh, these uh, so-called co-hosts include New York State Council of Churches and Hindu for Human Rights amongst others. What's worrisome to note are two things. First of all, the list of attendees, which includes Hamid Ansari, the former Vice President of India and Archbishop Peter Makado but does not have any representation from the Hindu, Sikh or Buddhist community. So much for pluralism. Second, the content endorsed by the IAMC in the past and the speakers for this event particularly. Will India bashers and the so-called anti-India lobby now in the US which is thriving there, will they teach us how to ensure religious freedom and plurality in our own country? That really is the big question we are asking on NewsX to discuss all of this, the ramifications of this event, which the US American Muslim Council has organized um, to discuss all of that and more. I have uh, Priya Iyer, founder uh, of uh, P Guru and foreign policy uh, analyst. Uh Shri Iyer, so would you like to come in here? Do you also see a McAlevian plot uh, or do you also see a very concerted effort by the so-called anti-India lobby to malign the image of India? It's okay to be anti-Modi. It's okay not to like the BJP. It's a democracy. There are many who are pro and against the government. Even those outside of India can have, uh, you know, their views. They are, they're free to uh, like or dislike the current dispensation. But to organize such events, to try and sermonize India on how... You you know, to protect so-called plurality in India and that too, when you have an event like this, uh, which has been very specifically organized on Republic Day, do you also see a more sinister plot here, sir? You know, they keep trying these things and uh, not much success, I'm afraid, because they know that they are peddling lies. In fact, I'm really shocked that an ex-vice president of India yeah. uh, is actually being part of this. And, and they are all, all they are going to do is to bash India and they'll take up some obscure one solitary example, blow it out of proportion when they know that a militant community belonging to the Muslims in India, called the Popular Front of India, hmm. is indulging in ghastly killings in India. Yeah. And no, nobody will look at that. But yeah. they will say, ah, but this particular Safran leader uttered this statement in Harutwa. And that shows the, you know, this is the same rant that goes on and on and on and on. So as far as democracy is concerned, everybody is free to express his or her opinion. But mm. they need to, especially the former vice president of India, Mr. Hamid Ansari. Yeah. This man, I can tell you, even as an ambassador to Iran, his record is very, very questionable as to what are all the things he has done. Yeah. For some reason, for some reason, a person who is the vice president of India yes. still thinks that he is something else first. As far as I am concerned, if you ask me who am I, I'm a human being. Then I'm a citizen of a certain country. Then I'm a Hindu. Then I'm Tamil speaking. I'm yeah. Hindi speaking. You know, and so on and so forth. But for a vice ex-vice president of India to behave like this is incomprehensible. Well, absolutely. I mean, I, it, I, I have to say this thing because you cannot be the second most important person in India and, and then have these kinds of views and express them on a global stage. Shame on you, sir. Well, you know, and so to take your thought forward, it's confounding to say the least. Even for a layman, all one needs to do really is go to a very publicly available Twitter account of this organization and you will see India bashing tweet after tweet. It's not anti-Modi. Just go through their account and you'll realize exactly what I'm saying. Well, 
absolutely. Time India pushes back. Time India calls a spade a spade. Shri Ayer, do come in here, sir. When you look at the representation, uh, you know, uh, in this organization as well, they want to speak about plurality in India, but they have chosen and very interestingly not to include anyone from the majority population of this country, which is the Hindus. Nobody uh, from the Sikh community or even the Buddhist community has been included. Very interesting, isn't it, sir? Yes, indeed. But before I uh, answer that question, I want to just clarify one thing from Mr. Shah. Hmm. He can Google and see what role Amit Ansari played as ambassador of Iran. I don't have to be saying this. He, he should go back after this program. I don't need to Google him. I know him personally. I don't so need to Google, Google him for that. So what? You can go okay. and read. I don't need to Google him. I don't need to get his input from him from I, Google. I know right. him personally. I know his character. I know I about him personally very really well. Right. Okay. All right. Listen, I didn't interrupt you when you were talking. Okay. Yes, let's go I'll one by one. Three here, please. Yes. And another thing, when an ex-vice president goes to a conference, even if it is online, there is supposed to be a double check of the backdrop and the background. It looks like this is not the first time he has been a member of this. And that also says that somebody is not being very uh, diligent in doing some of these things. As mm. to other thing about plurality, look, Minakshi, these are all online conferences. Somebody just asks and says, okay, can somebody XYZ join? We are, we are having a plurality conference. And, you know, people are just trying to say, okay, I have this slot open. Let me just go and say my thing there. And don't people don't really look into what exactly it is. But only when you start looking digging deeper, like the way you said, that you went into this Twitter a feed and you looked at all the different things that were there, then only the reality comes out about the intent of this organization. They have full freedom to say whatever they want. However, I'm glad that Joita brought in the association of this group with PFI. And, and, and my good friend Shah should know the kind of killings here PFI associated people are doing in South India. In, in Tamil Nadu, in mm. front of a son, okay. they bled the father to death. Halal killing, it's called. Yeah. They so opened when, his artery and let him enough. bleed for three minutes, right, right. in front of his son. Right. What kind no, of point? Fair enough. So I, I did get your point.